Flame's pretty special. Mom's having a little look around. Like what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, so this one, this old saber, saber liner. They made this nose to test airborne weather radar. And all Boeing and Airbus and big airplanes, they all have a big plastic nose. And, and in here is a radar deal. And it's not looking for other airplanes. It's actually looking for weather. It's a weather radar. It sees water. So it sees water inside a cloud. And the more active the water is, the, the more it sees it. And basically, you don't want to fly through the center of a towering cumulus. And this will show it to you in the dark night. But this airplane, what it's really famous for is producing the avionics, the type of avionics displays that we have in Boeing's and mo all modern airplanes these days. And they are have what's called, instead of instruments, they have what's called a multi-function display. Modern aircraft have switched from individual avionics to multifunction displays a long time ago. And it was this aircraft right here that tested the, the systems. This was, everything got flick up. This is the first aircraft to have a modern multifunction display put in it. And basically it got certified in this and all subsequent designs were all tested in this aircraft. This aircraft was a test bed. And you can just see how they modified the nose so all these panels could come off really quick and change out everything back there. And we tested a whole bunch of different weather radars in here. This airplane flew with Rockwell for about 25 years. Today, Rockwell Collins has a fleet of airplanes flying, testing. I'm dying to know what's inside these things. Oh, split flaps. It's the only way they can get this wing to land, eh? Totally split. Super small rivets. Those are, those sure look like a pop rivet. That looks like a solid shank. And these little pods, who knows what's inside them? But there's a lot of electronics in here. In here. And all these little panels are made to come off real easy. Got a big speed brake deployed right now probably is held in the up position by hydraulic pressure and down she is right now so this is an early model business jet and heavily modified for avionics emergency door up there have a look at the uh, again another reason that the wing the forward wing flaps are down is probably because it doesn't have any hydraulic pressure and they probably just coast forward downhill they probably just coast out <laughs> this little piece of plexiglass in here is actually an indicator the pilot can see it and if this lights on it does a little glow so he can check his own lights are on or off this is a little wick broken off an exposed bolt looks kind of funny. The aileron. Early, early jet engine. This thing was 1964. Early technologies. Oh, it's starting to rain. Doesn't do that much in Oregon. Lots of uh, discharge wicks along the back. So the inside of this is a is like a laboratory. Wish we could have a look. That's pretty weird, the wiring like that. Which tells you it's a wet wing. The wing's a fuel tank and the wires have to be outside of it. They sealed all the bulkheads and the entire wing is a tank. Well, I wish we could see in her. You can see in it. Grip here. Oh, it's got a lock. Cool. Let's see if you can see anything. These are 
little lights, I think, that are for looking for ice for the pilot to look at the wing, see if there's any ice on the leading edge. I wonder how he, I wonder how this airplane heats the leading edge. I wonder if it does heat the leading edge. I don't think it does. I wonder what this airplane does for ice. And right next to her is parked our NASA plane. And NASA had four of these planes. I sure made a neat video on this one. Please have a look at it. NASA used four of these airplanes to train space shuttle pilots how to land the space shuttle. Better not keep mummy waiting. There's an SR-71 synopsis going on in there this today. They got an SR-70. That's an X-15 hanging from the ceiling up there. It's a mock-up, but let's go see what they're doing.